Hi, I'm Carlo Bin M. Bayado from First Year BMMA. I did the research for this report. Hi, my name is Jason Cadenas. I'm a first year Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering student. Hi, I am Muriel Briones, BMMA 1. Hello, I am Aaron John C. Calago. I am from first year BMMA. I am the one who made the script for this reporting. Hi, I'm Isalte de Zanka El Bayanon. I'm a first year BMMA student. I edited the photos that is being used in the presentation. Bye! Hi, my name is John Garza Canilo, first year college of VCE. I work on providing and looking up the images needed for the project. Hi, I'm Arnold Capute and I'm the editor of this video. The Inca Civilization. Have you ever heard about Inca? Well, if you haven't, then let's start. I'll be giving you a quick overview. So, what is Inca Civilization? Well, the Inca ruled an empire that extended along the Pacific coast and Andes Mountains from what is now Northern Ecuador and Central Chile. They constructed a vast network of roads their architecture was highly developed, and the remains of their irrigation systems, palaces, temples, and fortifications are still in evidence throughout the Andes. However, the Incan Empire was overthrown in 1532 by the Spanish Inquisitors, who made great use of their Incan road system during the conquest. Well, that's it for this background. But, let's try to go ahead and check what are the Incan developments. Alright, first up, we've got stonework. The ingenuity of Inca stone masonry doesn't stop at fitting a few blocks together just to build their Inca walls. Such construction was necessary to prevent destruction in the event of an earthquake and the walls were so designed that they would absorb the impact. Second, we also got Kipu. The Inca did not develop an alphabet or writing system, but what they did develop was a sophisticated method of record keeping called Kipu. It, it was used with colorful knotted strings to signify certain information Inca kipus were primarily counting tools to store numerical data. However, some studies suggest they served literary and artistic purposes as well. Third one, we've got calendar. Yes, the calendar used by the Inca was actually very similar to our current calendar. They used a 365-day solar calendar and a 328-day lunar calendar. Though the months start in December, the solar calendar was their daytime calendar and the lunar calendar was their nighttime calendar. The solar calendar was based on the solar cycle. This calendar was used for agriculture, mining, warfare, and construction. However, the lunar calendar was based on the lunar cycle, which is why it only has 328 days. There is a 37-day difference in both calendars, though it is unsure if it was of any importance to the Incas. Hello, I am Uriel Briones. Next are the Inca bridges. Inca bridges were an integral part of an Inca's ancient road network. They were constructed using grass-woven large bundles, which were very strong. These ropes were placed every year by the locals as part of their public contribution to the landscape and perils in this region. Next, irrigation system. Inca aqueducts were important in irrigating agricultural terraces and bringing fresh drinking water into the cities of Inca Empire. The systems of irrigation protected against the flooding and allowed the Incas to reliably produce long-term food supplies at an extremely efficient rate. They collected the water coming from the mountains and helped distributing it across the wider areas where it was needed. Irrigation and drinking water systems 
and even baths were built. Many of these waterways are carved into the rocks instead of being put together from a multiple components. This was done to minimize possible leakage. Next are the Incas textile. They were made from a material such as minerals, plants, and insects. One of the most popular design was the checkerboard. Textiles were often produced for a state as a tax and textile production. Next is Inca skull surgery. Inca surgeons commonly are successfully removed a portion of patient's skull to treat the head's injuries. The procedure is called trepanation. A similar practice is done today to relieve pressure caused by the fluid buildup of following severe head trauma. The skull was slowly scraped away, resulting in a circular hole surrounded by a wider area of scraped bone. Natural antiseptics such as basom and saponins, which were plants with soap-like properties, may have reduced the likelihood of infection and following trepanation. Now let us talk about the fall of the Incan Empire. While there were many reasons for the fall of the Incan Empire, including foreign epidemic, the Spaniards' skilled manipulation of power and advanced weaponry ultimately led to the demise of the Inca Empire. When the Spanish arrived, the locals were fighting amongst themselves in a fierce civil war. This civil war was between two sons of the Inca ruler, Huayna Capac. The Spaniards persuaded some of the factions created by the civil war to turn against their own people. This successfully increased his small army of 168 men. Even with reinforcements, however, it still seems incredulous that a small army of hundreds were able to defeat an empire of 40,000 Inca rulers and 10 million subjects. Material power seemed to have favored the Incas. Pizarro correctly discerned that the Inca people placed a large amount of ideological power on the Inca kings, who these people considered to be gods. By ruthlessly and publicly killing these kings in each region he conquered, Pizarro took the power from the Inca royalty and gave it to the Spanish, the people who could kill gods. With their royalty and focus on worship destroyed, the general population accepted the Spanish rule as what was done. This created local assistance along with outside factors allowed the Spanish to completely conquer the region by 1572, marking the end of the Inca Empire. I sincerely appreciate your attention this afternoon and I hope you have learned something in our presentation. Have a good day.